here we are, and welcome to another episode of the Friday Night Movie Podcast. This week, we are going to launch a Friday Night Movie game show that we're going to play with each other. I don't have... Is that the music? That's the music. All right, that's it. So it's just going to be generic game show. Yeah, Lily, Lily. Okay, Lily can do that between the rounds. You'll do that. All right, I like it. And but before that, I want to get to some listener feedback. We love listener feedback. It's even funnier when the listeners are angry. And if you follow me or the podcast on Instagram, you'll have seen that my mother. That's some very she did very, not like how she was represented in, in a recent in, anecdote. In Becky's description of her buying and the ice my cream. My answer to her was that shows you for listening to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> she she was she took exception with the, the description of her buying ice cream, claiming that she had a twenty dollar bill um, and that she did not keep asking. Do for you know change. why I know it wasn't a twenty? Is because <laughs> I had to fish the money out of her purse eventually and I tipped the guy a couple of singles for to make sure he'd come back. Okay, so you actually, what was the other thing she complained about that she was upset about? Who can keep track? Oh, the beaches. Oh, right. She said She's like, you're wrong. There are two beaches in the movie, the East Coast beaches and the West Coast beaches. <laughs> they met movie? on the beach. Oh, right. Cause in she, the movie cause Beaches? I, I had said there's no like beaches in beaches. It doesn't count as a beach movie. And she was very upset about that because she said Mom that there's loves the movie beaches. two beaches. You know, it's not a beach movie, but could be. Steel Magnolia. That's like another one. Mom loves that one too. There's, there's, no, there's beach no beach in that in movie, that. but you know what we no, forgot? Just like <laughs> we forgot Baywatch. Lily's been worked up oh over having God. forgotten Baywatch. I was oh, so upset. Was. We were hanging out on the beach, just talking about how much we love Baywatch. Remember? Right. Because we were watching movie. like all these like young Atlantic City lifeguards, and we kept being like, "Who do you think she could really save someone?" Yeah, yeah. That's we were <laughs> like them that seeing. girl. So that girl got a big back. She could save someone, but that other she one, had we, thighs. we were like. Mm. It just seems like she could swim in the in the waves. And, say and that. then I have to say, there's back to the beaches. Becky and I witnessed these like young, like early twenties, late teens lifeguards who are responsible for a ton of people at the beach take out like an old fashioned wooden boat. These were the these were the lifeguards. Who were like, could they save us or not? And you know these like really pretty old you know wooden boats that say Atlantic City on them that I thought they were just there for like photo tourists ops. to take photos but they schlepped that thing out into the ocean to like do a practice round of like that's saving like, that's what they're saving they have to carry yeah, the boat and you can, and it's like if you like, can dodge this, a wrench you can, you can dodge, dodge a ball, ball. <laughs> if you can carry this wooden boat you can save someone I guess <laughs> Becky and I were like is this the most practical way to Shouldn't save someone at the like Jersey Shore or? I don't know I don't well I don't know I think a raft I don't. I thought they have to swim with the. It was little, like there was like a lot you know. of effort just going into maneuvering it in the waves, <laughs> right? To getting like the I boat don't, in and out. All Wait, right. but quickly speaking of beaches, we're not going to get into it now. We'll bookend it later. I have been watching Outer Banks, which takes place. Oh wait, did Outer don't Banks text, season two start? I think it dropped, but I started with season. Don't, one. Oh. Whatever you do, don't text Allie about it. She won't text you back. <laughs> <laughs> Don't she worry, she's not listening to that, that pod show. either. No. Right. She, Allie has been telling me about this other pop culture podcast. She's like, you have to listen to this with me. I'm like, what about my show? She's mm-hmm. like, oh. she's like, but in fairness, she says, my whole life is your podcast. That's true. <laughs> every minute. Of I, every I do day. want to shout out Josh and Danielle because I had we saw them a few days ago. Josh, big Josh, who uh, has his um, uh, complaints, his Josh's special complaints. Yeah, when he comes on to Josh's complaints, and they, we, I got to see them after years and. It was so exciting. And then, like, I we gra- grabbed a coffee with Josh, and he's like, I mean, I listen to your podcast, so I know what's going on. <laughs> and I was like, on one hand, I'm deeply offended. On the other hand, I'm so excited. Um, it was. I'm so excited I, to start yeah. this game. Okay, out. so this new game, I, Becky came up with the concept, and uh, I came up with the name. If we come up with a better name, that's fine. But in the meantime, basically the answer, the, the, the name of the game is Who's the Best Sibling? And the way we will rate who is the best sibling as to who has the most correct answers total of of uh, of answers of guessing what the other person would say. And um, the questions are all related to things we've probably talked about on the podcast. They're not quizzes about the podcast, but they are quizzes about our pop culture hopes and dreams and favorite things. So by the end of this, you will know who is the best sibling. And play along at home. Maybe you're a better sibling than 
any of the three of us. <laughs> and maybe we'll play this again with different questions in the future. So, Lily, uh, cue the game show theme music. Do, 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 I thought do, the game do. show music was mom slamming the mom, door mom over and over said, again. Because, like, on many cue, it's happening. I was like, oh, you're recording? <laughs> to be fair, we picked the worst place in the house to record. Fair enough. At a very so, active time of day. All right. So do 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 Dinner guest. So this isn't any dinner guest of all time. This is an actor dinner guest. It does not have to be alive. Otherwise, I would have specified living. Uh, but actor dinner guest. And uh, who would like oh. to go first with their... We, I think Becky and I, I can go first for your... Okay, should, we, should we say it at the same time? Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Mark, Mark Hamill. Hamill. That is the right <laughs> answer. That is the right answer. So that's one point for Becky and one point for Lily. Now my guess is for you guys number. Oh, so, we're doing every. Oh, we're doing each round. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So then my guess for Becky, what you're both guests for me, so that's good. My guess for Becky, um, I was gonna say Janet Varney, but I know that the right answer is Sam Hugan. No, you're so close. Wait, 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 no, no, no. Off. Becky has Lily has no guess, so Shy has zero. But I'll tell you, I can explain why it's not Sam Hugan. Okay. But that's a really good guess. Um. Oscar Isaac. <gasps> That's such a good guess. I can't believe I didn't pick him. All right. Also zero. You really like him. I and love him. That should have been I feel like you guys guess. like would have a Either lot to talk about. Either one of those about. should have been my guess. <laughs> you guys All right, would have a well, lot back. to talk about for know? some reason. Mm-hmm. I just so feel like... I'll tell you. Okay. Ultimately, I wanted my, my pick to be Taika Waititi, but I count him more as a director than an actor, yeah, even though he's an I actor. Agree. So I was like, that's not fair. That's cheating. Right. That would have been cheating. like me saying Weird Al Yankovic, right, 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 exactly. who's technically an actor. Because he was in your right. HF. That right. doesn't count. But so, so then adjacent to that, not that your second choice, but adjacent to that would be Jermaine Clement. That would be like. Oh, that was your no. dinner guest? Yeah. I never would have I've like that. been obsessed with him and everything. You were definitely the first like person that told 20. me about Flight of yeah. the Conquest. And, and even before that, like his stuff. Like so that's. Eagle versus Shark. And he's a really that, good and actor. And he's such a good actor. And he's so. He just seems he like that someone I'd be as a single dad. Because I really right? thought. I really, I really just great. thought about like who would I actually want to sit and talk to and have a conversation with. And I feel like that would be really fun. Okay, so very cool. So we have, all right, so now let's, to finish up round one, let us guess for Lily. Now, my mm-hmm. guess was initially going to be, I'm going to go very, like, who's Lily's recent zeitgeist? That. Mom's just like jingle. No, that's jangle. your dog. Oh, that's my dog. Okay. Um, you want to take off his jingle bells that he. I guess it'll like, just be part of the ambiance. He's like the the cat and meet the fuckers. Who like can <laughs> flush the toilet. <laughs> Jinxy. I feel like your dog is like one step away from flushing the toilet because he can ring a bell to go outside to pee. That's fair enough. Um, this Lily's dinner guest I was going to go with of recent fame, Rachel Bloom, because I would love to see the dinner that, of Lily oh and Rachel Bloom becoming best friends. That would be amazing. Talking they about would everything. They become best friends. Heavy boobs. There's yeah. so much for us to talk about. Exactly. But I also went with Sam Hugan. Oh, that's a good. Okay, so Rachel was my second. <gasps> I so was so she, close. She was so close, but then I was like, "Wow, they won't get that because you know I don't talk about her as much." But I will so say, mine is a not an all time. Mine is a very recent. So that's thing. okay. It can oh, be whatever recent, who you want to talk If I was thinking about Lily, like all time, like I'm thinking, I'm going to think about Lily from. You know, 15, oh. 20 years ago to today, I would have guessed someone Stop who's remained in the, the picture. Ryan Reynolds would have been my guest oh, for you. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. yeah. That's but a not, but not for the Shai answer. And Becky. <laughs> um, the person who, actor I've most talked about recently is Chris Conrad. Oh, right. No, Chris but I think those Conrad. were both. Like, Ryan Reynolds. And like, you love Ryan I love Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. And I would say my other all time would have been Jennifer Aniston. Oh. Like, I'm a yeah. huge Jennifer Aniston. So, yeah. so I was, I would say on the closest track because it was one of the shows. It was one of, and yeah. it was my second choice that I actually had like written down. Okay. And I right. wanted to pick Sam Hewen just so that you could get it right, but. 
No, I'm that's fair. I didn't. No, that's fine. Okay. But I'm glad that I got. But I, if nobody's we were way off base. Dinner with him. Let's just say that nobody's way off. Okay. Base. Yeah. So, so we the, know they're each other. good answers. At the end of round one, we have Lily. Oh no, this is not the end of round one. Okay. So no, no, exactly. I can literally hear everything. <laughs> this going is on our in the fault for this being in the mom, kitchen. Mom's next going to start grinding coffee. <laughs> What? She's There's... looking for the cap to her water bottle. Just pick, pick a new water bottle. All right, pick so question two of out. round one. Least favorite movie of all okay. time. I think and I are going at the same time. One, two, two three. The Last, Last Jedi. Jedi. So <laughs> that's the movie that hurt me the most and makes me the most angry. But when people ask me what my least favorite movie of all time is, I almost always answer the Doom Generation. Which is this, like I've never heard that. you say that horrible movie. Once. Philip mm. Kalen Haju loved that movie. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, he loved that movie, and I was like, "He's in Ooh. film." I know, I know, and and like he's in film, and it was so artistic, and um, uh, but so yes, the Last Jedi is definitely the movie I talk about the most. But I couldn't just make it. I couldn't be dishonest. Okay. You're gonna have to let. Like, it sounds like a Christmas episode with the jingle bells. You gotta let that dog <laughs> out of the house, Mom. When you go outside, can you take the dog with you? You know what I'm going to say is you guys always blame me for all the interruptions, so I'm going to have to say it wasn't me, it was the dog. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Sounds like so. a Christmas special. We're <laughs> here. <laughs> the jangly all bells. All right, so, so that's... Uh, it's, you can't cheat like that. That's not cheating. The, I was being you honest. You can't complain about one singular movie for years and then be like that's not your worst movie but i always answer like when my kids say what's the worst movie you've ever seen i always say the doom generation i'm, it's from the I'm 90s. gonna i'm gonna be sending one, i think you your, should watch the movie some letters at camp to find out. stars what's his name jonathan skate oh from uh that thing yeah, oh. alone with your principles yeah that's a great one that's a great Ooh, movie a the movie gives me the willies like thinking about it I quit. Yeah. I, qu- I quit, Mr. But White. I, I, I couldn't if my kids were listening the to this. They would The O-Neaters. Know. Sorry, we could just so do this for the rest of the episode. So zero for Becky and zero for Lily. Um, I'm going to give us half points. No, then, no it's, no. A, it's a zero. Lily. I wrote it down. Lily making up right. her own rules. Last year I wrote down, but I was like, I put a line through because I was like, no, but the real answer is this other movie. Do you want to know what other movie I had down for you? What? Inside Lewin Davis. That's <laughs> 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 well one of my favorite movies. I know. I well and you know what I have down for you? Not inside of the movie. It's <laughs> crazy hard. That was our big. That was like. A, that was like. A, we actually can't go. We can't go to that place. I just, that was like a I, very honestly, serious fight. Honest, we've had to move on. No, from. I honestly don't really care about either of those movies. Well, you uh, made it seem like you did. Uh, show that you know what. That's what happens when you pick a fight with your older brother. It's true. <laughs> like they will. They will make you. It will make you suffer for it. Okay, so you both have zero. Let's guess for Becky your least favorite movie of all time. My guess is, well, this is, I, I think it's The Holiday. No, I feel like you really, you're always making like fun that. of Allie for liking The Holiday. No, really is. I, I have neutral feelings oh, on Well, it. I really blew that one. Eli Wallach's in that, right? Yeah. yeah I like yeah. that part. You, but I have very neutral feelings on it. It's just oh. a movie. It's cute. Okay. I don't well, feel like I have an attachment to it. Zero for shy. I, I had a hard time thinking of what my least favorite movie is because I dislike so, so many. But <laughs> no, I'm kidding. The, the movie that comes Actually, to mind is like, it doesn't make sense because I know you loved the movie at the time, but I feel like now you hate that movie. So I picked Titanic. Oh, no. I could never <laughs> hate Titanic. I'll always... Mm-hmm. If you watched it now. Maybe if I watch it now. But, so my actual, when I thought about, well, at the time it was my least favorite movie, and I think if I went back and revisited, my feelings would not have changed. It would have no improvement, which is Crash. Oh, that's oh. the worst movie Wait, I've Wait, the ever seen. Paul Verhoeven movie about the people, like, licking each other's scars no. in the car no, no, accident? No, no, no. no the one that's a, million that, that one is baby. much better. <laughs> um, the that's one, better? Uh, that's yeah. better. That's this is the, this one's, is no, it? this is Paul Haggis. Cronenberg isn't... No, it's Cronenberg. Verhoeven. Oh, is it? Is it oh. Verhoeven or Cronenberg? No, no Crash, is, Crash, 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 is, Crash is Paul Haggis. No, no. The, the... Oh, the other one. James Spader one. Oh, yeah, no, that one is kind of cool. I think that's Cronenberg. weird. But, but I'm talking about the I'm I can I'm gonna have to Google it now. But it's the one that has like it's, it's like all, he made Million Dollar Baby. Is that the, the same one? Oh, then maybe it's not. Ever. Paul Haggis. Oh, it is. Crash. Okay, yeah, he made so Million then, Dollar right, Baby It's the baby one too. with like all the different stories about the terrible people. Oh, it is Cronenberg. I always mix him and Paul Verhoeven up, but you're right. It's Cronenberg. It, crash. Yeah, right. Okay, and that's a great pick because that movie's terrible. Right. It has all the famous actors are in it, 
and it's just I mean, so besides miserable. the movie that I yeah, that is Haggis. mine written Ugh. down on my list because mm. mine I feel like is super obvious. Besides that one, the other movie I forever I've only ever talked about as being the worst movie of all time is Million Dollar Baby. Oh yeah. Oh. So then, if it's not Crash a Million Dollar Baby, what movie? Do There's you not another like? movie. Think Wait, guys. I guess The Lobster. I love the lobster. <laughs> I what? You I thought you hated Everyone the lobster. Everyone gave me shit for the lobster. I love the lobster. Jose, like, yeah. had, Jose and mom were going like, to like disown me and sue me for that time that he never can get back. <laughs> I will never watch that movie based um, on how much I loved it. your family hated it. I thought that movie. no, he hated it. I loved it. Okay, but think, guys, in recent memory of this podcast, what is the movie I've consistently said is the worst movie? If you're assuming That's I remember things, the you old say. guard. No, that movie wasn't bad. That's that I'll never get time back for it. That I oh, went oh, 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 to the oh, theaters. Oh, 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 the Irishman. The Irishman. Irishman. I mean, I don't get points for it. You're right. Yeah, right. The what Irishman. did you have? Oh, I couldn't. I thought oh. Crash. That was oh. gonna be my guess. For that would have. That, that would have been the other that. one. I thought we would share that. That Million Dollar Baby and Irishman are the worst. Movies. Okay, so out of round two, the scores are one point for Lily. Oh, no, sorry. No, we haven't finished round two yet. Um, the, the next round of round two. The next this question of round two. Now we're moving on to round two. Yeah, is. No, this, sorry, this no. is the first question of round two. Oh, yeah. right. We're sorry, this is the round first. Two. So round one is over. The score is one point for Lily, one point for Becky, and a big zero points for Shy out of a potential four points I could have had. Four points? Mm-hmm. Yeah, four points I could have had. Okay. Right. All right. So now we are on to round... So we know you... You don't know us. You know me twenty five percent. We don't or know no, each you, other. You know me fifty percent. Right. <laughs> I got close with Rachel Bloom though. You did. You did. Okay, round two. Who would your sibling think Should are the best the movie siblings <laughs> of all time? Should we say Shy's at the same time? Oh wait, I don't. I don't know who Shy's are. Yes, you do. You didn't guess. Just okay. Think, ready? One, two, two three. three. Luke, Luke and Leia. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> You totally could have done it. <laughs> she didn't even have to think about it. I guess Mark Hamill based <laughs> answers aren't the ones that win. Default. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if they are because, like, they, they are. Don't... We both have. I wrote it down. <laughs> no, that was what I wrote down. I don't know if they really are if you think about it really they hard. They are one of the best, I think. I think so. They're really good. That's, yeah. They're really good. Okay. Especially with the continuing movies. I right. Think. When you think about how think he about trained that. her to be a Jedi and all yeah. that. Okay. All right. And uh, my guess for Becky. Let's start I'm, with. I'm going to guess that me and Becky's are the same. Oh, oh boy. Ready? No. Yeah. Mine for Becky. My guess for Becky is because sisters are really important to you. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Can I change mine at the last second yeah, here? Yeah. Yeah, no sure. one knows, but you picked <laughs> okay, more. Because <laughs> sisters are important, but I'm going to go with um, Barley and Beefcake or whatever oh, their names no. are from oh, Onward. I was so going to say sweet. Anna and Elsa, but... Oh, oh. I was considering Because you sisters Elsa, are but important, no, but then yeah. I was like, no, no, wait a minute. What about no. Barley and what's his name? Uh, Ian, but, Ian, but no. Ian? No. <laughs> Barley and Beefcake. <laughs> Ian? Ian seems like a bit of a, like a left turn. Okay, okay, well, I got zero on both of those. I can't believe I got zero guessing both of those. Okay. I was going to guess yours and mine are the same. Guess, <laughs> guess, That's what I said. Guess, I oh, ours okay. are the same. Okay. Guess, guess Becky's. She said it at the same no, time. No, no. Okay, go. Okay. You go first. Okay. Uh, wait, but what did you guess from No, me? no, you're next. We first do Becky, and then we oh, do you. Oh, okay. So I'm guessing um, Sally and Jillian. <gasps> <That's funny>. <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? Who are those characters? <laughs> Yay. I have to turn down your volume. So many onions. <laughs> Who are they? This, it's, it's from Practical Nicole Magic. Magic. Oh. It's Nicole Kidman <laughs> and Sandra Bullock, <laughs> Sally and Jillian. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, Lily's yours isn't Fred and Ben Savage from Little Monsters? <laughs> oh, my God. That was, that's a good one, but no. Wow. Zero my second for guess for you, my second guess for you is going to be um, Hocus Pocus. <laughs> That, I had that as an option. As the Hocus Pocus um, sisters. Because I love that movie. And, and they're three sisters. They are sisters? That, I don't think they're sisters. They're, they're, no, they they're are sisters. sisters. They're, not, they're not like sisters in the sort of more like... Not in like the coven way. They're like actual no, sisters. No, I think they're actual siblings. They don't look related. Um, they're witches. I don't know. I guess Bette Midler and Sarah oh Jessica Parker. Oh my God, that's amazing. Yeah. Practical match. Those are the best yeah, sisters. Best sisters of best. all time. Too. Okay, now... That's hilarious. Favorite... Star Wars movie. I'm gonna start with guessing Lily's. So Becky and I got a lot of points there just now. Yeah, yeah. Becky, I, well, I won't read till the end of the round, okay, but right. yes, you have a lot of points. Yeah. As in one. <laughs> so I'm going to guess for Lily, Return of the Jedi. Your yes. favorite Star Wars movie. Okay. Yes. Wait, but I didn't get to guess. So now no, you're no, really get, no. 
Oh yeah, well guess. You would have. You what did you have write down? Yes. Oh, what did you guess? I was gonna guess New Hope. So. Oh, okay. There you oh, go. Okay. So I got it. You're being Zero honest. I'm being that. honest. All right, and and let's guess for Becky. I love I'm an gonna, Ewok. I'm gonna guess for Becky, Return of the Jedi. Also. I I'm, I was gonna guess Empire. Oh, are we just doing the original three? That we're doing all. No, of them? I, no, we are guessing oh, yeah. all of them. Oh, I was gonna say like my initial reaction. Oh no, was, was it Force, Force Awakens? Awakens. Oh, Force Awakens. oh, that's what I wrote I, down originally. I was gonna say I originally, thought, and then I thought Force Awakens. Look, Awakens just, look on the paper. It has I Force Awakens. I thought Force Awakens, and no. then I was like, no, nah, she's too cinematic. She's gonna go dark. No, because I thought if if I like really had like a Ray favorite, like one of I love, I love, I love. Came out when you were first baby. Look what I wrote for Becky. And if it wasn't, and if it wasn't gonna be, and if it wasn't gonna be Force Awakens that it would actually be a new hope because I just find it so fun and playful and timeless <clears throat> and so for me it was going to be like the original like first first I, it's first the one, one I've seen the most now yeah. so I've watched it with Ari a ton of times yeah. okay, I should have so. guessed Ray I thought I just, about it's it. It's such a fun one. It's so... Wait, so did anyone get any right here? You got me right. Return That's of the Jedi. Oh, no, you have but to we have to guess for right. oh, Return of the Jedi. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's Return of the Jedi because of the Ewoks we know. Yeah, <laughs> that's why. That's, that's why. like not people even. who don't eat like Ewoks don't like wonder. <laughs> okay, Ewoks and cats. Wait, there are people yeah, that don't cats. like Ewoks. My, yeah, yeah, there's like there's a lot of people, of people hate the Ewoks. Before there was Jar Jar Binks, there was the Ewoks. That's that's not. But you the can't people who hate the in. Ewoks are the same people I think who like the Last Jedi. So, yeah. so wait, that answers <laughs> that. People who hate the Ewoks, yeah, are the same people. They, they, they like Mary Poppins. Um, Mary Poppins. Uh, Princess Leia. Okay. <laughs> round, so after round two, we have one point for Shy. We have four points for Becky. And we have four points. How do I have four points? Because yeah. we got we got Shy's right and each other's right. Mm. So we got a bunch of points. And so then you got, again, I we got yours wrong, but you right. got Shy's and mine mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So oh, no, you got mine wrong. She said New I got, I got. I thought New Hope for Lily would have been her favorite. But you got, I, you got Jedi that, for me. Yeah, yeah, but um, but I would have guessed, guessed New Hope for you because ma- practical magic because um, I figured I know that's when you watch the most with Ari, so I figured that was your favorite. I have. Okay, well, <laughs> can I watch. please just guess each of your favorite movies of the year before I'm gonna like guess? And well, guess. we're not at that one yet. Now we're gonna do oh. a a a mashup. We're gonna you're gonna have to guess your siblings by rent man of. Batman. I don't know why Batman came to mind, but I like the idea yeah. of rating Batman. But we're not going to take the obvious one of Michael Keaton being first. We or, are, Christian or Christian Bale. Bale. Or Christian Bale. Bale being second. Right. We're going to take sort of more deeper cuts. And I'm going to say, so it's the Byron Mint of Batfleck, Robert <laughs> Pattinson, and Clooney. And let's start with Lily this time. Uh, don't answer until we both go. Okay. My guess for Lily is going to be Clooney as her favorite, and then Batfleck, and then Pattinson. And granted, I don't even know if you've seen the movies with any of these actors as Batman. You don't need to see the movies to okay. answer this. That's true. Becky? I'm going to... For Lily. Guess. I'm going to guess for Lily the same order, yeah. Okay. Soup's wrong. I'm like really disappointed in both of you. Mm. Oh. Okay. I could not choose Clooney as first, because as you've recently discovered... I can't go to lunch with him. (laughs) So I'm like a little bit annoyed. Um, If you've listened to our episode two weeks ago, um, there's a whole thing about like, I won't be going to lunch with him. He will not be my buy for Batman. Um, Also, he had those nipples. Wasn't that like a whole controversy Um, on his suit? So I did. I bought Pattinson because he got into my good graces. In Tenet. In Tenet. Okay. And I want to believe he can do it. Because he really surprised me. So I'm going to buy him. Also because he's like our, our, the last hope. Because like all the other ones besides Keaton and Bale have been boo. So I'm like maybe he could be another good one. I don't know yet. I haven't seen him. Then I'm going to rent Clooney. Because even though I can't go to lunch with him, he's a good actor. And, you know, it's not his fault he was in that movie. However, it is Ben Affleck's fault he was in that movie. He could have said no. And I do not buy Ben Affleck as Batman. Really? Ever. He's just too, like, Boston or whatever. <laughs> he's too, like, what do they call it? Like, Southie or whatever. They, you know, like, all right, too. All right, he's just all right. no, there's no way he's Batman. Okay. Batman has to be, like, a like super, like, stuck-up rich guy. Right? Uh, all I just right. don't well, buy Ben Affleck. Okay. Either. Well, let's now guess Becky's. Becky's. Uh, I guess that Becky liked Batfleck the most. 
<laughs> then Pattinson. Definitely don't know me. Then Clooney. I'm, I, so, I'm so sad for okay, you right now, Lily, Shai. Lily, 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 what are you? I guess that Becky was the same as me. Pattinson, Clooney, Batflick. I. Yeah, Becky, Lily's wrong too. Lily's wrong too. No, I guess. I guess I, yeah, I think, like, I do agree with Lily, but I technically wrote down Clooney, Pat, Fleck. I'm because surprised. Because I, I'm totally on board with, like, in, in fact, I would watch the new one because I'm interested in seeing Pattinson as Batman, but Clooney's technically the only one of the three I've seen, and he's a Can sure I thing, she'll, she's so a, I went She's a stickler with, with like, rules. So, cinema. like, I haven't so, seen the other one, so yeah. I don't know how I could pick Pattinson as my buy if I haven't even seen it yet. That's so I fair. had to pick Clooney as my buy because it's the only one I've seen, even though it's truly terrible. Um, and I actually don't even really believe him as Batman either. I believe him as the rich guy. I just don't believe him as, like, like a, like a vigilante, you know? Yeah. But Pattinson seems, like, a little weird and scrappy. I, I believe that. Anyway, so you obviously met Affleck that I got right. Yeah, no, no, no. I, the fact I, that you had her man. buying Affleck makes me worried. I actually, I really, I really like Affleck in <laughs> oh, like I, certain parts. I'm, a, I'm an Affleck and fan. Yeah, as a director, just I, I haven't been convinced yet. All right, so more zeros. I like the town and Argo. No, now, I don't like Argo. But I'm an Affleck. That fan. actually might be now. My guess second. now you have to guess mine. Okay. Clooney Affleck. I mean, I'm so confused because he thought I would buy Affleck. So that makes so me I think, think he, he I think he Affleck? bought Affleck. Yeah. He's renting, renting Pattinson, Pattinson and, and Meg Clooney. Clooney. Yeah. Yeah, there but we go. But you're using, you didn't write that down. You just No, I didn't write anything down. I didn't down. write anything down. So you just, just guessed, guessed based, based on, on how the game is going. I probably yeah, would have put so, that down. I mean, I, you can just not so give me a point because I had no guess. No, no, no. You got you guessed it right, though. Sometimes you got to roll the dice. But can I guess your dice. favorite movie of the year? Because that I'm sure I have right. Okay, guess my favorite movie of the year. So the last question of round three and the last question of our game is, what was your sibling's favorite movie of 2020? So not 2021. So you can't, No, that came out in 2020. That came out in 2020. We're, okay. So eligible for 2021 Oscars. Yes. Right? Yes. So right. your favorite was One Night in Miami, and your favorite was Promising Young Woman. Yeah. Okay. And, and I guessed... Uh, oh, yeah. I guess Promising a Moon for Lily. It's pretty obvious. And I guessed Onward for Becky. I, okay, don't say it. Don't say it. And I guessed Nomadland for Becky. Nomadland. Okay. So well, how about who got points? Yours was One Night in Miami? Yeah. So Becky you, got two points. Did you guess One Night in Miami for me? I didn't do yours yet. Oh, what'd you guess for me? I didn't guess, but oh, now we know. One. Yeah, but so she didn't have an answer. So I was going zero. to like zero. make up an answer, but, but it wasn't. What would one you night have guessed? Miami. I was going to guess one night in no, Miami. You mm-hmm. Don't. Yes, it was. It was that or Judah and the Black Messiah. But then you kept repeating that you were annoyed that one night in Miami didn't get nominated, and you uh, loved I, Regina King. So okay, so well, it's cl- so I got two points throughout this entire game. I feel like the lesson we're learning is that like. I don't listen I don't to speak other? I don't speak up enough and you guys don't listen enough to what I say and I'm just the youngest sibling and I'm only I think left the lesson out. we're learning is that I'm very complex. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, who won? Except when I'm not and it's very I don't obvious. Know, you're okay, score. I, well the end got very confusing to me. Okay. I got 2 points in the last round. Got I got two. 1 point. Oh, oh, unless you want to count one night in Miami. I don't know. What do you think, Becky? That's I don't fine. believe her. Sorry. I, think I don't like generally lie. Yeah, she's not a liar. He, he was she's pretty like, obvious. But she like leans into things. I do lean in, but I think you can see with my track record, I have been listening to him since I, I've gotten all his all other right, well, ones then, right. Fine. Then you two tie with six points. And that makes sense. I have two points. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the best siblings so I think that, are Becky and Lily. Yeah, and I think it's obvious that you don't listen very well. <laughs> no, I, I don't think all of my... I Wait, hold on. Birch and Barley or whatever their names are, I guess those twice for Becky. But Her kid's keep, name is in the credits. But you just keep guessing things that like that's what Vlad worked on. That's not like something that... I mean, and I love the work that he did, but it's I feel not like, like that's I feel like, like when that was coming out, you were way more like, oh my God, I love this movie. And now you're like... It you was. I still cry when I watch it. It was but, a really good movie. Okay. Well, maybe to make me feel guilty. I'd love to know what people thought of our game show. And if anyone scored <laughs> higher than six, <laughs> do, 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 um, thought of our game show of who's the best sibling. Maybe you are a better sibling than us. If you scored more than six points, let us know. Honor system. Maybe we'll send you something fun. 
or maybe uh, we'll invite you to play the game with us if you got more than six. Uh, and and we'll see if you can beat us in the next round. Okay, let's get now to our Rex and our shout outs for this week. Um, I have a lot of them, so I'm going to go first. Number one. What's new? I mean, I don't know. You guys better start keeping up your I side have, of the I bargain here. I have stuff. Here. I have stuff. All right. So Masters of the Universe Revelation, the animated so-called sequel to the He-Man series of the 1980s, which may or may not be an actual sequel, uh, has a lot of fanboys upset because it focuses principally on Tila. Spoiler alert, He-Man dies in the first episode. Is Or, or maybe he's been shot he, to another he, dimension. He's, like, I he's don't not think really they, dead. Yeah, I mean, I'm he's sure dead, he's but he's not, not really dead. dead. The point of the show, though, is to focus on Tila's journey and the story from Tila in the aftermath of a world of He-Man and Skeletor. And... I thought it was fantastic. All of the characters are very true to the characters. There are a million high quality Easter eggs, like not garbage fan service, like good stuff that plays with the lore. They had Merman. You had also great flashbacks to what the He-Man show would have been under Kevin Smith. And those are really well done too. Like, let's do something different. This is animated? This is animated. The animation is fantastic. It's really nice. Yeah, I like the animation. The characters are really cool. The the voices are great. Sarah Michelle Gellar, Stephen Root. Alicia Silverstone. uh, 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 Yeah. uh, Lena Headey as Evil Lynn is like perfect. The guy who played Davos in in Game of Game of Thrones. Yeah, I think it's excellent. And I think... It's it's also it's it's a kids show. I could actually watch it with kids, and I thought it was a great. It, it definitely has Legend of Korra vibes, which is excellent. Oh, that's like, awesome! Yeah, excellent. I'm in. It's excellent, and all of the there's a lot of characters that were toys that never made it into the show that you always wanted to see, like Scareglow. <laughs> so it's so like cool. real deep cuts for like super fans, right? Yeah, but so well done. Like they created awesome. really. I will cool say, stuff. I enjoyed it. I never would have watched this without Shy, and I highly enjoyed it watching it with you. So I think like you can watch it with someone who's a fan. It's way better. I knocked this five episodes in the first part of of that were released from Netflix. I thought it was fantastic. I think Kevin Smith did an awesome job and I and I think people who are complaining are upset because their expectations were messed with because it was definitely marketed as a He-Man show in like such that the toys don't even have a toy Tila figure like in the pre-orders there's like He-Man and Moss Man but no Tila. And now can you get a Tila? Not I mean you can get a Tila but you can't get a Tila in the design of this show yet. Oh. So they kind of they kind of... They, they didn't have it like ready to go when the show was launched? They, they, they didn't... Like, surprise, here's the Tila? They didn't market the show well. I think they it's really... Weird. They pulled... In some respects, they pulled a little bit of a, a bait and switch from a marketing standpoint. But if you were just going to watch this as a He-Man follow-up... But also, have they said that he's not coming back? He could still come back. Well, I'll say this. He, he is... He reappears in the show in the fifth episode or the fourth episode or something like that in another dimension. So, yes, it's not like they completely got rid of him, but there is a big cliffhanger at the end as to whether or not he is going to survive. So I thought it was really cool. In fact, he gives up his, this is a lot of spoilers, but he gives up his immortality to come back to help Tila. So whether or not he lives or not, like, I think it's really cool that, uh, he man is you know going to be part of it. I just you know, but but either way, all the other characters are part of it, and they're really cool. So I'm good with it, uh, and I think folks should check it out. The other one we watched the other night, Lily and I, and a few other people, The Hunt with Betty Gilpin. I loved it. I can't I, believe that got I, bad reviews. It was I, it was heavy. I, um, it was sorry, twisted. It was and I had seen it. Mark, like, I think right where you talked about this, it was coming out right as the pandemic was getting underway and and it was marketed. I I, I feel like it was pretty heavily marketed in Europe. And and I don't think that, again, once again, this always happens, the trailer, maybe because I saw it in Europe and they were like, oh, this needs to be look really scary and dark. And that's how it was marketed. And then I was like, I don't want to see a movie about people hunting other people. That sounds awful. And then the trailer that I watched with you here was different than the, any trailer I had seen. So when we watched it, I was like, huh, I guess like I can see more of the cast. This must be a different tone. And then we talked about who the producers were. And I was like, all right, fine. I'm in. And it was great. I yeah, was... I thought it was really cool. Really edgy satire about left wing and right wing view, extreme left and extreme 
extreme liberal and extreme conservative views of like life. Like self-righteousness. And self-righteousness, but not super deep. It was just sort of like twisted right. and funny. Like so, like Danielle had said, who watched with us, like, okay, it's like a, it hits you, it's like a little bit obvious. Like it hits right. you over the head pretty obvious. It's not trying to hide anything of what the message is. But it's also 90 minutes long and yeah. it's actually quite funny. And it's got Glenn Howerton. It's got Ike Barinholt. It's got Hillary yeah. Swank. What? Yeah. Two-time Academy Academy Award winner, Hillary Swank. And, and I think it further reinforces that Betty Gilpin is just like a huge star. She yeah. is so great, and she can carry this movie. Then followed that up by starting the Woodstock 99 documentary on HBO Max um, about... So we... I don't know if you remember the different Woodstocks, but there was 94 when I was in... When I first started high school, which is like the one with Bob Dylan and it was sort of the bridge between the one from 1969 and then five years later they did another one and it was like a disaster it was like a yeah. disaster but it had like the, the lineup of the bands are like unbelievable it's like even the Tragically Hip and Our Lady Peace were on that but Our so Lady was Peace. but so was um, uh, Dave Matthews Band and Limp, Wyclef Limp, Limp and, but, Biscuit but there's a Korn, lot there's Metallica a lo- like it's it, a, an it, odd mix it addresses the issue of, of the like violence and and yeah. horrible things that happened at Woodstock 99 but it was just very cool to see this taken apart it was really like before there was fire festival in some ways there was Woodstock 99 right and I I will say that I I haven't finished it I'm interested in finishing it because I do think it was really interesting and I I didn't was so unaware of it at the time and I was because I, I just come back from school. I just come back from Israel and I was at camp when it happened and I was like what There's and I was Woodstock just like about like again? graduating high school I probably didn't care that much but um, I will say though, from what I've seen of the documentary, which is like three quarters of the way through, there is a lot of Moby talking. Yeah, that like, is probably the worst part of like this documentary. He's like so pretentious, and he was like on. The, I I mentioned the podcast. Yeah, I recommend yeah, that, yeah, podcast. that podcast. Wait, podcast. Oh, we're you're, gotta listen to it. There's this podcast. Josh called, had heard it. This so podcast he, called Heavyweight, which is hosted by a Jewish guy from Montreal, Jonathan Goldman. Nice. And he every episode is about somebody that needs to reconcile something from their past and the host Jonathan helps them track the person down and deal with this issue but he's like a neurotic kind of weird introverted guy and it's he's it's really funny and the I first episode yeah, is about his. his friend who needs to it's about his friend who needs to confront Moby <laughs> and because he oh, gave he him Moby? he tries and Moby literally ignores him but over he, and over and over again he has he has history with Moby and has he and it's, having to and do with, with Moby's success and yeah it's, he, he has had, everything the best to do with Moby's episodes. success and Moby completely pretending like but it never happened it's one of the best add on to the fact that like during heard. this documentary he's like beyond pretentious but then they have footage of him from Woodstock 99 where he's arriving and they have this big like placard with like all like everybody signed it of all the bands or whatever. And they forgot and him. They forgot him. And so he's not on it, but then he's reading off all these bands that he's like, Who the hell are these people? And he's like, Our Lady Peace. No one's ever heard of them. And I was them. like, Whoa, 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 whoa Moby. Know, I, we're from Montreal. We know our Lady We know who Our Lady Peace yeah. is. Sit In fact, down. It's pretty but but there are some other wild criticisms. There were only three women led acts oh my God. in three days of music. Like I know. Jewel, Alanis, and the cranberries, and, and the cranberries. Oh my god! But maybe no there way. was one, oh Cheryl Crow. No, no, and Cheryl Crow. So there was that's four. It. No, no, cranberries was in ninety four. Oh ninety four. So it was Cheryl okay, Crow. So, it was, so there was Alanis Cheryl Crow. and Jewel. That's yeah, it. Yeah, it was just like ridiculous. I mean, to me, to me, what's cool, what, what I think the thing overall highlights is, first of all, if you're going to do an anniversary of something. And you're saying this is the end, like it's sort of like that Woodstock 94 thing felt like that should be it. And then you don't get another Woodstock for 25 years. Right. They were trying to do this every five years. Yeah, like that's just a money grab. But th- there's a little bit of the film that I don't like where it's blaming the boomers for the behavior of the crowd. Like, oh, this is boomers greed trying to force their experience on younger people. Um, the, the, the Woodstock 99 acts are definitely not boomer acts like they're really the acts of our generation yeah. and the kids acting like idiots there are the kids acting like idiots there they're definitely the facilities and they're all these things that were not well done about that one but they but were like, still acting like assholes yeah like the the, the angry sort of male aggressiveness Fresh, right. that was going on there like was not like i i just have a hard time blaming limp biscuit even though they do try to blame limp biscuit for it i mean i think people which have is, to take responsibility for their like the people in the right, audience which were, is weird because things. they literally show footage of limp biscuit in the documentary telling the crowd please behave nicer 
Like stop. Well, no, 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 that, no, no. That was Offspring. Oh, that was Offspring. No, Limp Bizkit did refuse to calm the audience down. Oh, that, okay, that, that okay. That was a part where they're the the. Oh, so that's why they blame claim, specifically Limp Bizkit. Yeah, fault. that's why they blame Limp Bizkit. Anyways, but also the, this is the this is where I do have a question. If you're organizing Woodstock, I'm not saying who should and shouldn't be able to be it, but like Metallica, who are there? Like Metallica is like this for the generations type of band. That you know, the, I, I've seen them. They're incredible live. It's you know, I guess it's different 20 years ago than now, but like Metallica, okay, I could see them at a Woodstock, but Limp Bizkit? Yeah. Right. There were I guess they were so big then. They, they were, were questionable. So big then. And I obviously were trying to get young people to go to this, but... And the young people showed up. And, they're, they're... and they acted like young assholes. So that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. The other thing the movie also talks about is that Woodstock 1969, the original Woodstock had its own problems, but because the right. only footage we have of it is that amazing documentary, that that's it's all. It's been romanticized. It's been romanticized. Like people died. There was the mudslide. Like there was like horrible things that happened. But right. So 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 because there's this snapshot, and I think like as you get further and further in the future, you don't get these. You get to know everything about everything. But either way, Woodstock '99 sounds like it was like a terrible thing to be at. Like yeah. and, and all of that movie makes me not want to go to a music festival. And then last night, which started off as an appetizer situation, to go back to our appetite, like I was waiting for Lily to put her kids to sleep and we weren't sure if we were going to watch a movie. And I offered 10 times to come over, but was told to please stay home with my gross cold. I'm just saying. I, well, you were pretty sick. I am not. Saying. I, I'm didn't, not following. you want to know why I'm watching Outer Banks. I thought you That's were, why, because no thought, one will hang out with I me. thought you were, <laughs> well, hold on a second. I had heard originally you were staying home. You went to bed. Like we it had dinner and then you said you were going to bed. Me. No, well, you Well, because we're going to do our movie night tonight. And then I was going to rally and come over and but I that was, was told, already stay home with worthy. your snot and congestion. And yeah. you want to know, you're giving me shit the next day. Why are you watching Outer Banks? Because no one will hang out with me except John B. <laughs> John B. The Outer Banks John was B. made for Becky. Uh, I, it might be my algorithm. <laughs> and but but we it's w- like the trash of Riverdale with the aesthetic of Friday Night Lights. Like it's kind of amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so I can pretend and, it's good while I'm watching it, but like it's not. The shaky camera just covers up the bad acting. <laughs> so I, it's so accurate. So that good. <laughs> that is the best description of that show, and and I recommend it. People should watch it. So the best description. The. Uh, <laughs> I put on a movie that I've been wanting to see, and again, the great I'm glad thing about you put the hunt, it on because I never would have agreed. This to is watch one this where I had you. to just like I, I, I only like, just had to start the hour. movie. Yeah, yeah. I only and the and last this was, was ninety minutes. Like the hunt was ninety minutes, which already you've earned my seat at the table. Like you can tell me, and and Gato said tomorrow war was good, so I will. I would love. I to, would like to see that. It's like, like an investment of two and a half hours. But that's a two and a half hour investment. These are ninety minutes. Like order snacks. We're gonna have so this movie. Pee breaks, yeah. And insert all the discussion that will happen. I saw Fat Man, oh, which yeah, is in yeah. which Mel Gibson Walton Goggins. and yeah. Walton Goggins oh, are. Love Goggins. Love Goggins. And, and the premise of the movie is what it is, is a Santa Claus is a, a, a kid gets angry at Santa Claus and hires a hitman to kill Santa Claus. And but it's told in this like gritty, almost. I wouldn't say Coen Brothers, but it does have a it, sort of it, Fargo-esque yeah. kind of feel the to filter. it. At least, the very least, the filter. And the we'll get to Mel Gibson in a second. But A, stuff. I thought the movie was objectively good. It was interesting. It was funny. It moved fast enough. Mel Gibson and Marianne Jean Baptiste, who plays Mrs. Claus, did a beautiful job with the relationship between uh, Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus if they were like these real gritty, hardworking people. Um, and the elves were amazing. Like all of these little intricacies and details were really, really, really well done. And the movie moved along really well. And it was violent, but it wasn't over the top. I I, I think Fat Man was a surprising buy. Like that was a found money situation. Like I put it on just to kill time and then we'd figure out what we'd watch later. And it was directed by these two brothers, Esham Nelms or Esam Nelms and Ian Nelms. And they actually put an Easter egg of their name in the movie because the, the depanar that they go to at one point is the Nelms market, it, which I thought was good. But I don't, I don't, I don't know much else about these two guys, but based on this movie, I will keep an eye out for other things that they make because they co-directed this. And 
It was really cool. Now, Mel Gibson, of course, in real life is like the worst person um, or one of the worst people. But it's like this weird blind spot I'll always say I have is I really enjoy him as an actor. And because he's so tied to the Lethal Weapon movies, which are so important to me, I, I continue to watch things that he's in and people can be angry at me for it. And, you know, I deserve it. But uh, I'm not in any way excusing him as a person when I when I do that. And these young, I assume they're young directors. I think they made a cool movie here, but and I'd I like also, to see what else they make. I feel like also if Mel Gibson's horribleness is like kind of targeted at you personally, you know, because you're Jewish shy, then you can decide if you like want to watch him or not. And people can't. I, I get think that at you. I think that's true. I think I, I like, would have a harder time with him if he was. If his big, I mean, I'm sure he has horrible I'm views sure about other people, but he's everyone. most he, famous yeah, for his anti-Semitic things right. about black people right. too, said, oh. which I find I amazing most... when he acts with like a, ph- a phenomenal actress who happens to be black, like his wife in the movies, like a yeah, you know, I, I, an amazing yeah. actress and I, I probably just... a good person, but she's black. So I find that pairing really interesting considering he's been caught saying terrible things about black people. But I feel people. like he's most famous for how much he hates Jews. Sure. I mean, I'm sure he's equally famous for how he hates other know, races. Lots of other people. Uh, um, but but he's our... so he's terrible. But but I thought he did a beautiful job and, and, and hats off to them as actors because if, let's say, I don't know if she liked him or didn't like him, but it's not, you know, she may not be in the position to turn down roles. It's not like yeah. she's a super famous actor and she did a beautiful job. She was a highlight of that movie. So good for her to act uh, with such a despicable person. It, anyways, Fat Man, I highly Can, recommend. I can thought, I say something horrible that Seth Rogen tweeted when he found out that Mel Gibson was playing Santa Claus? I, I guess so. Is it, I'm going to have to cut it out of the no, show. No, he just goes, ho, ho, Holocaust denier. <laughs> <laughs> like a lot of Jewish actors reacted to this casting and the fact that like he won't go away. Like I'm just saying, oh, like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. still like, it, it's a, it's a big deal. It's a, it's definitely an issue. And I'm, I'm really glad that other like people speak up and say, this guy's a piece of shit. Like, why are we? Oh, and I'm still him? saying he's a piece of garbage, but like, can't why are, why are we not seeing him like do an interview with Oprah and make a massive apology and like having gone to therapy and like go to a uh, like I, Auschwitz I, and like learn something because like, he doesn't he doesn't want to, what, he doesn't want what, to. What, like I'm like well, can't we see that and like ha- like then do the whole opposite cancel culture thing where we forgive someone and then we can all be friends again with him no no he's terrible he Is can't he, be so for- he must really be terrible yeah, yeah he's terrible <laughs> wow. Like I just feel like, yeah. Okay. No, he's he's got to be terrible. He's got a lot of problems. This is the first time I've seen him in a while, like cast as someone somewhat redeemable. He was sympathetic in this movie, right? Yeah, he's yeah, mostly he being the, cast as like he, the bad guy. He was the hero in this movie for sure. Well, actually, his wife was really the hero, but yeah. I guess. But but he was good. All right, uh, Lily, what have you been watching? Same thing as you, except I only watched the ending of that movie because I was putting my kids to bed, and it's only ninety minutes, so that only gave and me thirty an, minutes. And another show, um, Girls Five Ever. Which I, I finished yesterday. That show really gets better as the season goes on. I think that first episode's rocky, maybe the second, but it's like delicious. And the songs are so, so good. They're really I funny. really, really like that show. Um, and then on my own, I've been watching Sex Life, which Allie has like watch that peer pressured me into watching it. And then now she's like, you have to finish it so we can talk about the ending. I just want. Like, if you are in the privacy of your home and no, like, children or possible in-laws are around you, go to episode three around, like, I think it's minute 19 or something like that. There is an insane... I'm going to actually show it to both of you no, when this I is nope, done. Nope, nope, nope. Don't know that we need to all watch it together. It's I don't want to see it. I'm going to show it to you guys. I'm going to record your reaction because everybody's, like, doing this, and we're going to post it on, on Friday night when we... I don't want to see it. Um, it's ridiculous. Don't make it weird for our I really like Sarah Sash- Shahi, who oh, how is do you the know main her? actress, because, I mean, she's been around a lot more than I realized, but she was in The Rookie. She played the love interest oh. of Nathan Fillion for, like, a season and a half or something she's like that. She's great. And I yeah, think she's I think awesome. she's fine. Um, um, it's just like you had said, it's like suburban, like mom porn where like she, suburban moms. 
They should get what yeah, makes them they happy. Yeah, should, they should get what makes them happy. But it's like she's like you know thinking of her bad boy ex boyfriend, but and her she super, has a rich, super like, rich, relatively husband. nice husband, right? Who, and like perfect, he's not perfect, and there's definitely problems in their marriage. But like Shai said, like even when they're fighting, he's like super respectful to her and like really nice. So it's like the perfect situation. He's like, I'm going to show you I love you by taking on an amazing date she, wait, so and paying attention to you and being he thoughtful takes about her, all the I things. get this. I wonder what where the algorithm picked up this, and they thought they should spend money on it. He takes her to a broken social scene concert. Oh yeah, she's <laughs> really into broken social scene. And then they pay for broken social scene to be in the show for maybe ten seconds. <laughs> and I'm like, there's like something went awry here because I guess they're really like focusing on the really? suburban moms. My like age. exactly thirty seven to forty two. Like, like yeah. thirty seven exactly. to forty two who like went out to clubs when they were younger. And now I've like settled down in white picket fences. And I was just like, oh my God. And then I was like, what is Broken Social Scene doing that they took this gig? Um, and and the other part is... I guess because all their fans are moms now. Yeah. So. yeah. And, she's, and she is a mother herself. So it's not like she's... She can't relate to it. But there is this uh, Instagram shot of her with um, the... She's, she's pumping... And she's like, you know, uh, you know, and she's in the middle of work day and she's like, I bet people can relate. And I'm like, look, I don't my wife is beautiful all the time, but like, I don't look that good when I like dress up no, for work, let no, alone whether no, or not. Yeah, I would like be... she's like still like an actress who like looks <laughs> insane and she can like literally like cut glass with those nipples. Like her boobies <laughs> oh, are in the show Ooh, all the time. Can't be unsaid. <laughs> no, it can't be. But like, honestly, like there's <laughs> so many nipples in that show. Um and yeah, it's definitely just like a fun watch. It's by no means anything that should be nominated, I guess, for awards. But uh, Allie has peer pressured me. Maybe she'll do it like like the same thing with Outer Banks, where she'll make me watch a show and then ignore me after. Well, now you're living in the same house right now. So. Oh, she's forced to talk to me about it. Exactly. Becky? Well, since I've been hanging out all by my lonesome, <laughs> I finished Four Weddings and a Funeral TV show, and I'm not going to recommend it. But <laughs> if anyone has seen it, I will say... None of you deserve Duffy. And if you haven't seen it, you won't know what it means, but you have seen it. He's too good for all of them. That's all I have to say about that show. Well, maybe there'll be a second season with five weddings. Ugh, I, there was, I don't even think there were four weddings in this one. I think there was like <laughs> one, two, I don't know, two? There were two weddings? Anyways, three? Oh, there's three. Anyways. Um, it, uh, but more importantly, I am all, I'm like also almost finished season one of Outer Banks. Um, John which B. John is, B. John B. Which they they so commit to that name, like yeah. he's never not being. What does the John B stand B. for again? I don't know. They, they haven't s- told us. No, it's his dad's last it's his, name. No, it's his dad's. I think first. No, name. his dad goes by Big John, and he goes by John B. Yeah, but it, they'll tell you eventually. They tell you what the well, B stands for. I have one and a half episodes left. Things he's also thirty really and like go- still in foster care. I know. He's still well. The, <laughs> so when good. I started it, I was like, okay, they're obviously older people playing teens. Some of them look a bit younger, but I mean, I guess they're sort of between like seventeen and nineteen years old is what their ages are supposed to be on the show. Like seventeen, still in high school, and maybe. 18, 19, just graduate. Okay, he supposedly is going to go into foster care. He's probably right on the brink of eighteen. And then in like episode six, Friday Night Light style, they just throw in, damn, they're all 16. Like as if they've just like retconned the whole show to like make you think they're like younger. Try, that they're younger. Oh yeah, like Tim Riggins is right, like, really like, he's like He's like 14 apparently in season one by the time you get to season three. Like things so are just So that they can have more seasons. seasons. And I'm just like, I don't feel like this show needs them to be that, that young. young. At all. It actually and would be better if he's like if they were older. Shit, thirty in real life. Right. I think he's like like twenty seven or that. Um, and is aren't, isn't he dating? He is dating the woman who is the love interest in real life. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's what Lily says. Um, yes. But I have it's to a big say, deal. as far is as that a like, requirement for these Netflix shows? Like Sarah Shahi is and, dating uh, the uh, Australian guy, and she was married to Kevin from Shameless before that. No way. Yeah. Who's? Oh yeah, I thought they were still married. Not anymore. Huh. Damn. They got just they got di- divorced in 2020. Oh shit. Probably yeah, I just read right an article about the time about she was making this show. Interesting. Um, so I will say This is not that kind of podcast, but it is. <laughs> I think I think like as far as my gutter palette goes, I think this is a great watch for like a sure. for like a soap opera This is a beach read. kind this of is yeah. a beach read. It's okay. super it takes it's place like at a the fun beach. it's a fun summer now show. Now you are going to the Outer Banks. I, that's why I started watching it cuz we're going to the Outer Banks in 2 weeks and I wanted I to get ready. Are you going to, are you going to look? Like a, I I have me wondering. What part of the Outer 
banks is this? This doesn't look like any place that we're going. <laughs> this doesn't look like any place I've ever Thought been. It looked like like the Florida Keys or something. <laughs> but anyways, I'm very uh, I'm very well, excited for our trip. On that note, Becky, where can people follow you to the Outer Banks? At well, don't don't do that though. <laughs> At Paper BK Princess on Twitter and should I get my real Peloton handle? No. No, don't. that was really okay. funny when you did it last time. Just keep telling them it's yeah. pancake for table. Pancake for table, Peloton. I might actually change it though. Um, anyways, that's all. Lily, uh, where can people follow you? Chichi K Gomez on Twitter. You can follow me at Pancake for Table on Twitter and Instagram. Follow all the Friday Night Movie shenanigans at Fry Night Movie on Twitter and Instagram. And join us in supporting the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, the Equal Justice Initiative, and the Asian American Journalists Association. Um, the theme music by What Does It Eat uh, will kick in now and you can check out What Does It Eat on Spotify and iTunes and all the other places and please go to your favorite podcast platform leave us a review uh, rate us do things that help other people find us share us do things that help other people find out the show because we love having new listeners and uh, we are so thankful to everyone who is listening and have a wonderful day guys bye have a great bye (laughs) Love you.